Hi there, I am Kathleen and I am Nizzertastic and today I'm gonna to give you some tips for how to help your child move past the blank page. So sometimes when we get all ready to make some art with your kids or draw or encourage them to create, you'll notice that they get there, they get all their supplies out, they get their paper and then they just don't know what to draw or they have no ideas of what to make. So we're gonna come up with some strategies in this video. I'm gonna give you some strategies for um, helping them move past that blank page or that like, I don't know what to draw, I don't know what to make kind of phase. So we're gonna hyper um, drive or energize our ideas so that way you can help your child be successful at home or if you're a teacher and you wanna help your students be successful, these are some great ideas as well. Now sometimes when we have a blank page or a blank canvas, that is a lot of white space and we don't know where to start, right? So we get there, we look at the blank page, it's just like, oh my goodness, the overwhelm of, of so many uh, absolute options, right? Infinity amount of options is too much, right? Because you can, as an artist, you can make anything. There is no right or wrong way to make something. There is no one answer. So there is an infinity amount, an absolute crazy amount of different things that one could possibly create. And just thinking about all those different things is sometimes uh, can create an overwhelm and therefore cause one to not create, right? There's too much, too much freedom. So they don't know where to start or they just don't know what to do or what, if they have an idea, they don't know what to do or make it, how it's gonna look like, right? It's hard for them maybe to visualize something to create it, right? And even for painting or making uh, like a strategic sculpture in my own practice, it's sometimes so much when you're staring at, for instance, a blank canvas, because this can become literally anything. It can become anything. There is no right or wrong answer on this. You can put any image on here and it will be that thing. And that is terrifying sometimes, right? Because we don't know where to start. So we're going to talk about how to give a little bit of structure, not too much that we're like inhibiting creativity. And the sky has to be blue. No, it doesn't. Get over it. Right? It's not too much freedom or it's like, oh gosh, what well, I can do anything. Come on. You get like this fear, this paralysis, right? Analysis paralysis of too much freedom. Or it's not too narrow where they have absolutely no creative freedom. The pink flowers must be pink. You must create draw a color inside those lines and make the stem absolutely perfect. The sky must be blue and the grass must be green. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know if you've ever been outside in a storm because the sky is never blue in a storm. And second of all, the grass isn't always green. There is winter, there is summer, it dies, it is covered in weeds. I don't know, maybe there's dandelions growing through it. Just saying, it's not realistic. So turf your expectations of what you want for your kids or students' art. That is the real problem. It's your, your wants for their art. Let them be the artist and let them, if you look into art history, I've seen, there's art that is installation art and is literally just, I've seen that there's an artwork that is just dirt inside a gallery. There have been artists, not, in, this is unethical, that have put <laughs> um, different poisonous uh, insects all together in a tank as part of their artwork and then let them do their thing. Uh, and that was questioning ethics but then the part of the art was like that nobody stopped it. And there's other variations of that too. Um, there is all kinds of things. There's all kinds of things out there. And so, and in or there's abstract art. There is, there's Jean-Michel Jean Basquiat. He really broke the mold um, with his new expressionist works of just drawing inside the lines, right? Takes on a much different flair. You look at Jackson Pollock, for instance. Now, no, you cannot, anybody, anybody can make a Jackson Pollock artwork. He broke the mold. Also, it took a significant, it took his, it took his entire uh, mental health to even get recognized um, and a lot of rejection there. So no, yeah, yeah, yes and no, right? So um, yes, any 
anybody can throw paint, but it, but no, not anybody is going to and also put themselves out there and get into the galleries and do that whole thing and take it seriously and explore it in depth as a way to reflect oneself. So yes and no. And that's the cool thing about art. So anyways, I am off my tangent, so let's dive into this episode. I know it's a long introduction and I went super ranty, but that is part of it, right? I want you to, I want young artists to have that freedom to be creative. It's like a huge important part of my why for Mr. Tastic. Um, and also I find that around grade four, it's a great, I don't know what happens between grade three and grade four. Grade three, they're like, they'll draw anything they want, freedom. Something happens between grade four, between grade three and grade four. Once they're in grade four, they are judging their selves compared to others. So we don't want to inhibit that. We want them to just be themselves and let them be them. Let them explore their own identity, ideas, be creative, do the things that they want to do. And that is important, right? You only get one life to live. So let's not inhibit it. All right. That being said, let's dive into this episode and come up with, or I'm going to give you some ideas of how to help your child move past the blank page. Let's make some art. Number one, super simple. We're going to start off with just providing them with drawing or art prompts. So um, you can find different, come up with different ideas, make a list either uh, on your own or together with your child or students. Make a list of, start off with just like 20 or 30 different drawing or art making prompts. You can put them on like one line or on a popsicle stick um, or a piece of paper, right? Cut them off, put them in a jar and you can pull out something and then use that as, as, an, as a way to get ideas. Um, and I think that's a really good flexible one. Now, if you are needing some pre-made prompts or ideas, you can look on the screen right now, scan that QR code that's on there. That's gonna take you to my free art making guide, ultimate uh, making art with kids guide or kids making art guide. I can't remember what it's called. Anyways, it's gonna basically be my free PDF that you can download instantly. And it's going to help you with come up with ideas for making art there's gonna be lots of drawing prompt pages lots of pages with drawing prompts and art prompts that you just pick from lots of lists um there's gonna be full art tutorials and drawing tutorials in there both um to help you make art throughout the entire year right so based on all the different seasons and holidays and all kinds of things are in there so if you're wanting just a quick you don't want to come up with a list of drawing ideas or art prompts. You can just scan that QR code on the screen and download it for free. And then there you go. You have some ideas of what to draw. It's going to give you an idea, but it's going to be broad flavor. And it's not too narrow where it's telling them to draw a dinosaur, but you have to make the eyes orange and you have to color in the lines and you have to color it with outline it with felt marker and then color the inside with pencil crayon so it looks really nice and neat and tidy. <laughs> Boring. Who wants to do that? Like legit, like would you wanna do that? Do you wanna to be told how to do that? No, nobody does, so don't do that. Anyways, so that's the first one is to provide, either come up on your own with your own list of drawing prompts or art making ideas or sketchbook prompts, or um, you can download the one off the screen. Number two is to set up the art space for creating. You're gonna have your paper out or sketchbook, whatever you're gonna draw on or make on. And then you're gonna give them two different art mediums. Maybe it is watercolor paints and oil pastels or soft pastels and pencil or pencil and charcoal or uh, pencil and pencil, colored pencils or pencil crayons, whatever you choose to call, call them, wherever you're at, they're called both. Where I live, it's pencil crayons. Maybe where you live in the States, it's called color pencils. C'est la vie. All right, so, um, uh, whatever you, maybe it's uh, felt markers and pencil crayons or colored pencils. Maybe it's wax crayons and felt markers. Maybe it's uh, wax crayons and watercolor paint. I don't know. Pick two mediums and put it on the table in front of them with their, so something to draw with and something to draw on, on the table. And that way they have a, a complete, they can pick their own ideas, right? So lots of more freedom, a lot more freedom, but they are going to get uh, inspired by choosing either to use both of their art mediums in their drawing or just one of their art mediums in their drawing. Now you can do that, right? So like for instance, you might draw with wax crayon and then finish the artwork with some watercolor paint 
or draw with oil pastels and finish art, um, artwork with watercolor paint because both of those mediums will resist the paint. So you'll get some resist painting techniques or flavor and that will be really cool and fun and you'll just have fun exploring and experimenting and play-based learning um, and choice-based learning. So student-led, child-led learning, super, super awesome. All right, um, or uh, yeah, so you can either use both or they can use one and that's, that's not giving them the idea. The idea will be their own, but they're going to be uh, led by the mediums they choose, inspired by the medium. All right. All right, so I would love to know where it, do you think is the struggle? Um, my question for you is where do you find the struggle is in your house or your classroom when it comes to making art with your child or your family or your students? Where are you finding that struggle? Um, I would like to know your answers in the comments below. Where do you find the struggle is? I and mean, maybe when it's, maybe it's getting the ideas or knowing what mediums to use or helping them get past that blank page. Like, where is your struggle when it comes to uh, maybe it's finding time? I don't know. When it comes to making art together or getting your child to create or getting your family to make art together, um, where do you find the struggle is for you to getting them kind of going? or getting to the point of actually creating. I would love to hear your ideas in the comments below. I will personally respond and I might also turn it into a future video um, to help you solve your struggles and problems. I am here for you and that is, we are here together and doing this together. So I would really appreciate your comments below in the description of this video so that way I can help you move past your struggles, give you some great ideas and then I might even turn some of those into YouTube videos on their own, just so that way you have a more in-depth response and I can help you. Because here's the thing, if you're having that struggle, somebody else might be as well. So let me know your ideas. Where are your struggles when it comes to making art at home with your kids or family, or even if you're, if you're a teacher in your classroom? Let me know below. I would love to help your uh, the kids in your world get past the not making art phase, not drawing, um, not creating, getting stuck at the blank page space, and then into the creating space. So let me know your answers in the comment section below. All right, so number three is to find either art lessons online for your child, so that way you can find a more structured, scaffolded uh, way of learning, right? They have a guide, a tutorial to follow and learn through. They're not having to figure out what ideas or materials to make because they're gonna look for, they're gonna have some classes or lessons. So you can either do in-person lessons um, or find online lessons to uh, use. Um, or you can, if you're feeling comfortable with it, you can lead a lesson. So you might be, maybe take your kids on a walk or your child on a walk or your students on a walk. Um, and then it could do maybe plain air drawing so they can take their, something to draw on. I like to grab a clipboard and paper and then something to draw with. So like a pencil, color pencil, whatever it is, something to draw on, something to draw with, and then go out into the world and find something to draw, even in your backyard um, or on your patio, whatever it is, and then find something to draw. Maybe it's just a little bug or just a leaf or whatever. Whatever it is, something they, something noticed in the world as a spark for something to draw. And plus it's a little bit more engaging. They're getting outside, they're getting creative, they're getting exercise, and then they're having a new experience to create. Um, or maybe you set up a still life, right? You get um, a vase and some stuff out of your kitchen. You set, set up a still life and then they can create art observing it from real life and then drawing it. You use oil pastels or soft pastels or pencil crayons or colored pencils uh, and then creating that still life artwork. Or maybe you get a little toy. I have an actual box. The box appears. <laughs> okay, so magic box. I, this, is, this is very old now. I, I started this when I was a, in new to teaching, which was like 2011. But anyways, um, so I just have in here a bunch of things from the dollar store, things I've collected. And I used to pass them around and do still life drawings with them with my students. So it's just like literally like those dollar store like bugs and lizards and like rubber ducks. These are really popular. I think these are Rolling Stones. <laughs> Rolling Stones rubber ducks. <laughs> Frogs. There's dinosaurs. Bugs. Here's a little lamb. You know those little dollar store toys. Um, and then you can just have them close your eyes, 
right? Or you put it out and then they pick one out and then they have to do a still life drawing of the thing they've pulled out. And they always turn out so good. This is a super loved activity um, by kids. They I have no idea there's like so many things in here. Things that students have created me like a billion years ago. How cute is that, eh? Santa, I love these things. Anyways, so you put these, um, you have your magic box, you pull the thing out, you put it in front of them on the table, and then they have to create, to dry and color it using their choice of art making mediums. That's a great giving them idea. It's not, it's structured, but it's not narrow, right? We're trying to find that happy balance to spark some ideas. Now, all right, number four is to create an art challenge together. Um, so your child or you can create, or together, collaborative, um, can create an artist sort of challenge. So maybe it's like to, um, I challenge myself to find uh, five different dinosaurs either online or in books to draw um, and then draw five, and, you know, draw or make art for five different dinosaurs. Or it could be more broad, like um, doing sketchbook drawing for over 30 days. So create this challenge and then they'll, because of the pressure, they have to complete the challenge. And I would advise giving a prize and incentive at the end. So if they complete this challenge, they get to go choose uh, X, Y, and Z um, from your prize booth that you have. They get to pick one thing, or maybe you guys get to go to blah, 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 uh, the aquarium, I don't know. I don't know, I don't live where you are. <laughs> Whatever, um, you get to, they get to pick uh, a weekend activity, or they get X, you know, X amount of time on their video games bonus. I don't know. I'm just giving you ideas. Um, whatever makes sense for you and your family. But there's, uh, they come, they, you guys come up with a challenge, they complete the challenge, and they get an incentive. And that is going to, it's going to be like that reward based system that game, gamify, gamify the art by having a challenge, right? Think about video games, how, you know, you want to get to the next level so you can unlock things and get the rewards. That is why video games are so addicting. You go up to the levels, and you can even have different challenges, right? Level one is this challenge, level two is this challenge and this reward, level three is this challenge and this reward. So if you gamify it, then uh, it'll be so much more exciting. So game level one maybe is like an easy challenge just to give them that confidence, right? Complete one drawing equals bag of candy or a pop, can of pop, whatever it is. And they're like, yes, I passed level one, right? Because level one's always easy to pass on games. <laughs> Right? It is. It's so easy to pass level 1. You're like, yes, I'm already level 2! But it's not until you get to level 17, you're like, oh my goodness, I have to get a lot of experience points to level up to level 18, guys. Can you tell that I play video games? Uh, anyways, <laughs> right now I'm playing Pal World. I'm stuck on it. Mm. Anyway, I beat Hogwarts, Leg Hogwarts Legacy and then I had to like 100% it, obviously. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but then, what? here's the thing, there's an example, uh, I beat it all, so why do I keep playing it? I don't anymore, because I beat the whole thing, there's no point. There's no point, you gotta have to, you gotta gamify it, create a reward system, come up with it together. So I love it, I love the idea of just having like level one, art, challenge is this, reward is this, level two, new challenge, this is your reward, then you go up to level three, and it gets a little bit harder, but the reward gets a little bit better. Level five, we are going to the amusement park. You beat this crazy challenge. You did 30 days of sketchbook. We are, or you beat a whole acrylic painting. We're going to the amusement park. Woo! Right? That is a sick way of inspiring them to create. I bet you that will really fire them up to learn. Five is to find um, an online course. So if you are not confident in how to use art mediums, your child has no idea how to use art mediums, or you don't know where to start when it comes to drawing or making art, um, you would just like a little bit more structure, maybe you want some scaffolded art lessons that you can play anytime, anywhere, on any device, even downloading an app, and you just want it to be super simple, then I suggest checking out Kids Art Academy. It is actually my course, Kids Art Academy is my online course, um, it's all pre-recorded, it's not live, so don't worry. Um, you can log in and then it's going to have scaffold lessons. So phase one lessons, phase two lessons, 
and phase three lessons. So phase one is learning the basics of how to draw and use your mediums. And then we're gonna go phase two is to kind of start building on the, we're gonna scaffold the lessons, so we're gonna start learning more creative techniques, we're gonna give it a little bit more um, freedom and expression. And then level three, I'm gonna teach how, phase three, I'll teach how to use a variety of different art mediums to make a variety of different art projects. These are all, three phases of learning, but in there, there is tons of different lessons to allow your child to learn how to draw and create art, both drawing and drawing skills and art making skills, so that way they can level up their learning and then also work through the course and complete them by following videos uh, that I have created. So video or uh, drawing tutorials or video art making tutorials and they can follow along and create with me. You can hit pause, you can hit rewind, um, just like you would on YouTube for instance, but it's all hosted on my own website. And you can check it out at artastickids.com. It's called Kids Art Academy. You can scan the QR code on the screen right now or hit the link to it in the description below and it'll take you to where you can learn more information about Kids Art Academy. You can use it with your entire family so that way it's not just one kid. You're paying for a course for just one child and then you have to, you know, get pay for two kids if you're going to a real in-person lessons, right? You have to sign your kid up if you have two kids, well, that's gonna be double the cost, right? Well, no, but this is just one, one membership or one in moment you can use it for the entire family you can even create with your child and I will walk you through learning how to do drawing skills learning how to cartoon learning how to shade learning and so you can use your pencils in so many different ways and I'm gonna teach you how to use different art mediums I'm gonna teach you both drawing skills and I'm gonna teach you how to make artworks and it's so fun kids are academy i highly highly recommend it again you can scan the qr code or hit the link in the description below and enroll today and then you can draw and make art at any time that works for you and your family so that makes it flexible plus with your enrollment you get unlimited forever access to the course that means you can create it more than once and then have access forever there's no time limit it's all good my lovely friend I really, really hope to see you in that course. All right, my friend, that's it for this episode. Your next video to watch is my kids art and drawing dinosaur video where I'm going to draw and teach how, how to draw a dinosaur and also teach how to make a dinosaur artwork in this next episode. You can click the link above on that card or in the description below in the video and then you and your kids at home or in your classroom can learn how to draw and make a dinosaur artwork with me in my kids uh, art and drawing dinosaur video. So make sure you do that uh, and then subscribe to this channel and like this video and don't forget to put your comments, your answer to my question below in the video. Uh, how do you feel? Uh, where do you feel that like that struggle is when it comes to making art with your child or family or with your students? Let me know again in the comments section below in the video and I will see you in the next episode.